I keep this keep keep this in mind at all times. What do you see for you know? I mean, the way things are going now in the in the world, I think a lot of people are frustrated and giving up. They feel like they got no control over it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What does that? How does that make you feel? I mean, do you ever get discouraged? <laughs> it's a uh, it's a repeat of past history. You know, you people lived and moved and so on. Among my own people, we were moved from what is now Georgia and Alabama by force. Our people walked with soldiers driving them on horseback. And they came to the Mississippi River and they purposely overloaded 12 ferry boats and many of them sank and many of our people died in the crossing of the Mississippi. Then they came to Indian Territory, which later became Oklahoma. My great grandmother was on that march. It was cold, she had no shoes, and her feet froze, and probably gangrene set in. She, she's one of the many, many hundreds of graves there in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, with no name on the markers, just a cross. That's where she, she li lives, I mean, that's where she lies. And when you talk about some injustices about somebody else, but when it comes down to you, your flesh and blood, where she was forced to undergo this, then I could have taken the other side and become very angry and carried this anger for a long time. But later in life, I knew about this great love that the Creator had for all of His creative things. And to appropriate that love within yourself through your own faith and belief, then it's easier to have that universal love that crosses many cultural boundaries, many religious boundaries from, for which some of my uh, uh, denominational brothers have criti been critical of, of me working in different areas. I've been to a synagogue, to a mass, Pentecostal, uh, little Baptist church over in the country somewhere, and, and Methodist church over here, and uh, people are people. And how, how is heaven divided up anyway? Is there a, just a little place for Baptist people over here and Methodists over here? Or uh, where did the word denomination come from? It's an, it's an expression, an interpretation of the Bible as they read it and as they, as they look upon it. Pentecostal, they had a Pentecostal feast 50 days after the feast of the Passover, the Pentecostal, and that's where the denomination bases its denominational name. We can go on and on and on, and yet we have a universal God, one God, one Creator, one wisdom, one energy. And so uh, it doesn't matter to me what people believe in as long as they are made aware that He is still here. What do you say to people who look at you and think, you know, here's just one more guy, showman, phony religious man who's up, you know, mm -hmm. claiming to do this and claiming to do that. You see, mm -hmm. the, the, the news reports are full of people mm -hmm. doing just that thing, and I think most people are skeptical about it. Yes. What do you say that people think you're a phony? To, just, what do you say to people who, who think uh, you're a phony? I respect their, they have every right to believe what they want to believe. That's their bag of tea, okay. And, and it's their problem, not mine. The Chinese had a saying, as long as you stand straight, you never need to fear a crooked shadow. So I just go on. That's their problem. I don't retaliate or anything. It's just, if you believe that way, go ahead and believe that way. And I'm, not, I'm, not about, I'm not here to change people's minds or attitudes. And if, if it pleases them to think that way, let them think any way they want to. I go my way and I do my thing. And, and that's it. <laughs> you don't take money for what you do, do you? I will take it if it's offered to me, but I don't charge a fee in saying that I need this. Uh, I, I can always use it. Money actually is a personality. It expresses what kind of person you are when you have it and when you spend it and why. But just to amass it as an end, means to an end, then uh, 
it becomes your master. You must control it. So for the things that I do, when in my training, every time I went to my teacher, I never went there empty-handed. I didn't get something for nothing. It was their livelihood. I would take food, I would take money, and give it to them so that they could buy things they want, not me trying to determine this is what you need, but I would give them food to sustain their life. When you offer food in our way, they say that extends your life for another day. And when you do that to an older person, some of the blessings comes back on you also down the road. And so we always do that. There's always an exchange for our services, and it's known, so we, don't, we didn't have to charge any fees. But the non-Indians, and, uh, and not knowing about my tribal tradition, I had to go around and say, uh, well, it's going to cost you this for me to do this. And uh, well, for instance, here, here's an interview, and, uh, and there's, there was no mention of any money of any kind, and which, which is okay with me, you know. And, and I know that the cameraman and the interviewer and, and, and every personnel didn't come down here for nothing. You're not doing it for nothing. There's a, a salary, and then the organization that you represent will probably continue to be aired because it has uh, a, uh, a drawing power of some kind, you know, and, and to be in it. And I know that uh, you don't uh, go around over the country just getting something for nothing, you know, and, and yet that didn't even cross my mind, you know, and, and uh, like the uh, reporter asked me how much you're getting paid for that Colorado deal, and I said, uh, I know they'll pay my expenses, Beyond that, it's up to it's up to within a certain budget if they have things for such services. Uh, maybe not just exactly like the services I rendered, but something on that order. And uh, if nothing else, whatever their conscience might be in on this, I'll probably get something. You know, and they did take care of my expenses there and back, and they said I would be hearing from them. In that, there's no set amount that I am expecting or anything. They didn't say, we're going to send you this and that. They didn't tell me that. But uh, And you don't said, worry about that? I'm not worried about it. Worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. You can sit and rock. It gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere. You can care and be concerned, but you can do something about it. So things like that I don't worry about. What, do you th what kind of lessons? Could we learn from what you guys do? What could modern day society, people who live in you know mainstream America, get from you? What would you like to see them Be get? first. Any any anything that you strive begins with self. And uh, self knowledge. Know who you are. What is your identity? To what and to whom do you identify? what is very meaningful to you, the things that you want, the things that satisfies your heart. And then the next step would be self-control. That means self-discipline. There are a lot of things you'd like, but you have to control yourself because of ethics, because of the laws, moral or otherwise, and you have to stay within certain bounds and learn to live with it by uh, learning how to control and after you have controlled, then you sort of let yourself open to communication with a higher being. You can amass a lot of knowledge. You can be a double PhD in any given situation, but if you don't have wisdom to guide that knowledge, then that knowledge alone is nothing. You can be the very best in any given field, but if you don't have the wisdom to guide it, there are many PhD people in penal institutions because they didn't have wisdom to guide their knowledge. We've got to stop for a second, guys. That's nice. Do we okay. get a 